Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of my Storm fans out there. It's me, your captain speaking. If you give me just one moment, I'm going to make sure that you and everybody else that you cares about knows that this is going on right now. I'll see you in just one moment. Hello, how are you all doing tonight? It is time to play the Epic Storm. And uh, Monty Gamer, it's it's not time to get besieged. We are doing the beseeching. This is the latest and greatest of the Epic Storm. This is version 15.0, and we have incorporated Beseech the Mirror into the Epic Storm. Our previous version had Mind's Desire, fantastic card, but that's just fine. Um, we're being uh, proactive and hitting that Beseech the Mirror paired with Gaia's Will and the classic The Epic Storm Shell. However, we're also doing one more thing. We're bringing Ponder back. This is something that you know when we have a bunch of tutors and relays we want to find them and we have tested out playing ponder back in the epic storm we have a mana base to suit with three blue sources a mess of carpet of flowers coming back with the advent of all of the blue days tempo decks uh, michael reed so that's something that I'm going to have to talk about. The Epic Storm is lagging behind a little bit in terms of public awareness. We have released an updated version of this deck um, today, actually, um, version 15.1 that is available only to members of the YouTube and subscribers to Patreon. So any level will get you this information. We have a video about it that Bryant just released, but it's not available to the public yet. And obviously based on the comment that pro, pro, <clears throat> excuse me, prompted this contextualization of what we're doing today, you can maybe get a little bit of a hint, but this is what we're going to be playing. This is our public and recommended list. We're still tweaking things, um, but this is 
what we're going to be recommending and honestly what I'm testing for Eternal Weekend. So without any further ado, I'm already queued up for a league. I'm looking forward to this. You know what's going on. Let's get started. While we queue up, let me tell you a little bit about how you can test out this deck right now. You can go down in the description and check it out on Moxfield. They're an incredible sponsor of the channel. I used them long before I actually ended up being sponsored by them. But let me tell you a little bit about it while we wait for our first opponent. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. And we are back. We're still waiting on our first opponent, but let's dig into this list just a little bit more. Um, this is really just kind of a traditional The Epic Storm, except where we were playing something like Wishclaw Talisman or Infernal Tutor, we are now playing Beseech the Mirror. Just, just a phenomenal card, right? We're going to find out how good it is as we play up against our, our first round opponent, Kentaro Hikori, an absolute beast of a Delver player, um, typically known for playing fair blue decks, typically leaning towards tempo, but we won the die roll. So let's see how we fare. Uh, this hand is, you know, I'm okay with this hand. Um, it's got Galvanic Relay and Veil of Summer, two cards that I want to lean into for this matchup, and a couple of land drops. Um, I'm going to keep this. I understand that, the, you know, the second Galvanic Relay I really wish was going to be something else, but we're going to work with what we have. See what goes on. So uh, we're just going to lead Misty Rainforest and go. That's all that we're going to get done today for our first turn. Spicy MTG. Hello, James. Yeah, we're uh, we're doing good here. We're going to be playing game one uh, with our Beseech the Mirror tech for the Epic Storm. I'm pretty excited about it. And this looks like a Delver variant, whether it's Grixis or Rug or Straight Is It. Who knows? They kept on top. Ooh, okay. Hmm. And we draw, they draw a card, and then we draw a card. Chrome Mox. Okay. That's not bad. That gives us something to do with it, this Galvanic Relay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So this actually allows us to potentially bait out counter magic on a burning wish and then galvanic relay we'll see how that actually ends up working uh, we have the requisite mana whether we are stopped somewhere along the way is another story i'm getting a bayou this pairs well with our volcanic island to give us all of the colors of mana that we ever could want and it looks like we're at the very least going to relay and likely, yeah, okay, that ended up resolving as well. We're also going to Burning Wish. Whether this eats uh, days or not, oh, it did not. Okay, I am going to get something here. I actually think that it's going to be so I could get another relay and hope that I can chain these. I think that that actually might be the goal here. I don't want to get a Thoughtseize. That's um, Thoughtseize and Galvanic Relay function similarly in that they both overcome single point interaction very nicely. So I'm going to get this Galvanic Relay and cast it. This also kind of buries the lead a little bit that our hand does not contain an additional Galvanic Relay, which I kind of like. 
Okay, brainstorm, burning wish, ponder. And they're considering something about this relay. They're gonna daze this relay. Okay, that's just fine. I'm not gonna pay for this daze. They have delirium. Um, they put ponder in their graveyard from that uh, Darcy trigger. And they have made their land drop, which we knew about already. Got in for three, and they have six cards in hand. It's our turn. Okay, no water for me yet. Um, our draw is Beseech the Mirror. Not great right now, although I would like to change that very much. So let's... Let's start off with a brainstorm. This is gonna change our hand up dramatically, which I think is what we want to do. Hmm. Okay. That was not as good as I was hoping it would be. What I can do is put back, um, hmm. So I can use this Lion's Eye Diamond to cast the Burning Wish and the Ponder if I crack for blue. The Ponder would likely have to shuffle. Uh, no, 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 no. Hold up. I can potentially relay here. If I put back Beseech the Mirror and Galvanic Relay with... It doesn't matter which one's on top. I can... One, two, three, four, five. I can Veil of Summer... Crack the Lion's Eye Diamond for blue, ponder into the relay. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Beseech the Mirror and Galvanic Relay. Let's play out this Lion's Eye Diamond. If I could get them to interact here, that would be nice. Although, if they interact here and then my Veil of Summer resolves, I would have drawn the um, Galvanic Relay, which would have been unfortunate. So I might have wanted to stack that the opposite way to prevent myself from falling into that trap. Really got to think about those little micro decisions. If I had stacked the Beseech on top, then things would have worked out a little bit better. Uh, just kind of a fail-safe scenario. So they're brainstorming now in response to this veil. Um, I'm not gonna pay for a daze. All of my mana is spoken for. Maybe we can get them to force it. Okay. And they have stifle. They exiled a stifle. That's worrisome. Okay, they have a Darcy trigger. And they put a wasteland in their graveyard. And Veil of Summer is going to fizzle, or be countered, I should say. Okay, let's ponder now into that Galvanic Relay. No shuffle. And we get this Relay for seven. Not bad. We've got a Burning Wish in Exile and another Burning Wish in Exile, so we have a main deck tendrils, which, by the way, is a, a facet of this new Beseech technology. We have a main deck tendrils of agony because Beseeching into tendrils is a very common line. So we're not out if our burning wishes are all completely gone, which is great. And as far as our relay, they could daze a copy, but there's a Rite of Flame, there's a Beseech, a Veil of Summer. I like all of this so far. A Dark Ritual would be great. Brainstorm, Chrome Mox, Lotus Petal, that's good. Bloodstained Mire. Okay. I think that we can make something of that. We'll have to see next turn what our draw step gives us, what our opponent does. They binned a wasteland. Oh, I was going to say that they might have had a wasteland and we're going to cut off, off, cut us off of mana, but that's not the case. 
Okay, so this is up the Beanstalk. This is a tempo deck. Um, this does not play Delver as far as I'm aware. Although they might, I don't know. But Rug Tempo. Teamer Tempo. However you want to call it. I usually say Rug. Which is weird because I usually say something like Sultai for Bug. Um, I don't know. Okay, let's think about this. We've got no imprint on the Chrome Mox. So we have the Bloodstained Mire, the Lotus Petal, the Rite of Flame, the Lotus Petal. So that's four, five, six, seven. We should have enough to beseech this Lotus. The double Lotus Petals are gonna give us the black sources. The Bloodstained Mire is going to give us the green source for Veil of Summer. And the red source here is a colorless or a colorless here. So what I think we can do is play out some of our zeros first. Um, hey, Alex, how's it going? Let's brainstorm. Yeah, because if we can hit uh, an imprintable for Chrome Mox or a Dark Ritual, yeah, that's even better. Okay. Cool. A Lion's Eye Diamond would have also done something very similar. Let's win the game. Hey, Nardolphin. Uh, yeah, the, the rug tempo control thing um, looks pretty cool. I know that I saw that Brian was posting a video about this. I did not watch it. Um, but it looked kind of cool. At least the thumbnail was convincing. I just, uh, you know. Okay, here we go. Bargain. We're going to sack the Chrome Mox that doesn't have anything imprinted. And then we're going to bargain again if this resolves. Which, okay. So they get to Force of Will. And then with all of this on the stack, I'm going to Veil of Summer. They have two cards left in hand. And we're going to see what that ends up being. It resolved. Okay. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I think... With a possible exception of, uh, no, 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 they're tapped out. Okay, we just win because we get the tendrils of agony. Cool. I was gonna, I was gonna say something about a stifle, but no, nope, they were just tapped out. This is game one of match one, Fraser. Yes, absolutely. So, I'm looking forward to figuring out what's going on here. I have the sideboard guide, which you can get if you are a Patreon supporter, not a YouTube member. Uh, we've separated them so that the sideboard guide goes to support the Patreon and the Patreon goes to support all of the website writers, which is awesome. Um, and we have a Delver plan and it's gonna be the Carpet of Flowers and the Abrupt Decays. And we're getting rid of three, oops, three Chrome Mox and three Mox Opal. Okay. Thanks, John. I really appreciate that. I was pretty excited about that line. Um, okay. This is the sideboard plan. Artifacts out. We are a Galvanic Relay deck. I get that, guys. But Carpet being a more permanent source of mana is much better than all of these individual sources of mana, um, just plus ones essentially. Carpet can be dark ritual or better sometimes. So that's the idea there. Plus it's really fun to bargain a carpet of flowers. Um, ooh, hmm. This is an interesting hand. It's got everything that I want if Carpet resolves. If Carpet doesn't resolve, then I'm a little bit concerned. I'm gonna keep this though. Uh, the fun thing about 
Carpet of Flowers is that you can bargain Carpet of Flowers in your first main phase and replay it with Gaia's Will and then move to your second main phase and trigger it again and you get a ritual effect out of the whole deal. It's pretty cool. Yeah, Mike, okay. Thank you very much for getting that joke. I couldn't put Dormammu in there because probably copyright issues, but I appreciate it. I'm running this out into days, I understand that, but I think that I am soft to wasteland and I would like to not be soft to wasteland. Um, I'm not gonna add any mana. I don't really have, if this brainstorm was a ponder, I would ponder, but that's not worry. I'm not gonna worry about that. Oh, hey, human doom, you're moving to your first apartment. Any advice? Um, set up a routine to make sure that you do all of your chores. Make sure the dishes are done. Make sure that you have laundry systems in place and keep a good relationship with your superintendent or your manager, apartment manager or whatever, right? Keep those relationships good. As long as they're not pieces of garbage, then everything should be fine. Oh yeah, Travis, get renter's insurance. That's a big one. Definitely get renter's insurance. I got a policy and it's not really ever come up, but I feel a lot better because of it. Okay, they've brainstormed and pondered and their ponder chose not to shuffle as we were talking about renter's insurance and whatnot. Okay, they chose to draw. I am going to use carpet's ability. I'm gonna choose blue. I am going to brainstorm. Okay, this has been good. I think what I'm gonna do is put back the Abrupt Decay and a Rite of Flame. No, probably a... Hmm. Okay, the second Rite of Flame is just like a Dark Ritual and is less color intensive so that I'm not really struggling with my fetches. And that's actually pretty important because I have blue and red or green mana, and this is gonna be black or red mana probably, or green or black mana. So I'm gonna put back the dark ritual as well. Um, my colors are a little bit restrictive on this turn, and what I want to do is cast a relay. I don't know if I can yet. It's gonna depend on if this Veil of Summer resolves or not, or what happens, but they're tapped out, and this is a really good opportunity for me, I think. And the next thing is I can brainstorm for another Veil of Summer. Woohoo! like that. Okay, Misty Rainforest, and I'll put the Rite of Flame in the library as well. I really should have played the Lotus Petal because now I'm not playing around days. Uh, you know what? What I'm going to do, uh, because I... Uh, yeah, Anthony, yes, definitely. Uh, putting the Dark Ritual back was great. Um, okay, I'm going to let this Force of Negation resolve as opposed to playing around days. Or, and playing around days as opposed to playing into it. That's the phrasing that I was want wanting to know. Um, okay. So Lotus Petal, and then I'm going to Rite of Flame. I think this is enough mana. This is for, oh, this is actually probably not enough mana. Okay, I can't Veil of Summer. Oops. Although, I have a Rite of Flame on top of my library that will allow me to Galvanic Relay. Let's actually, let's actually count, cast the Burning Wish. 
Okay, so I don't have to use the Veil of Summer. I think that that's actually better, although I think that that was a little bit of an iffy sequencing on my part. I should have counted my mana a little bit better. Um, that's okay. So the Galvanic Relay is where we're going with this. And relay occurs. We get a Rite of Flame and then a Dark Ritual, or a land, excuse me, a fetch land. Um, another relay, that's good. Okay, Rite of Flame. I'm loving this mana. A Volcanic Island, a Burning Wish, Dark Ritual, Dark Ritual. We've got a lot of mana and another relay. Okay, I think we're rolled up. I think, I think we can make this work. Um, barring something really heinous from our opponent. But we have the Burning Wish to potentially Thoughtseize for a Flusterstorm or a Stifle. Really, I'm worried about the Stifle because I got the Veil of Summer. Okay, did it. Our opponent did not want to play that out. They believed me that I could sequence that appropriately. We were not able to so showcase Beseech the Mirror. Uh, turns out Galvanic Relay is good enough. MH2 coming back and really, really good. All right. Um, so let's queue up for round number two. And I'm going to tell you about an awesome sponsor that we have, Card Hoarder. All of these cards, well, actually I own some of them. But a lot of these cards are rented by Card Hoarder, a sponsor of the channel. And if you want to play Magic Online and you don't want to have the investment of the cards and you want to switch cards around more frequently, then Card Hoarder is a really, really good way to go. Let me tell you a little bit about it. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. Alrighty. So, obviously, no Beseech this time. However... This card is so fun. This card is incredible. And obviously we've iterated on it a lot on stream and in the YouTube um, videos proper, not the live streams. And we've just been testing and testing and testing this card. It's incredible how fun this season of Legacy has been, even with all of the league noise that you've you've been getting right you know the the disparity between competitive events and modern or legacy leagues is pretty pretty stark right um mind break trap for example is playable in legacy leagues uh pekachu okay this is someone that i recognize and i couldn't tell you what they play we're not going to keep this hand. I don't think that we can keep... Uh, on the draw... On the draw with a Brainstorm, I think that actually this might be a keepable hand. Yeah, we've got the Dark Ritual Beseech, which is a nice little combo. And then a couple of Brainstorms. If they're not a Wasteland deck, I'm kind of okay with this. We're going to keep it. Um, but, like, Leagues are where Mind Break Trap is playable. And uh, competitive events is where Mind Break Trap really falls off. But we are playing leagues today, so that's what we got. And just for example, in terms of things that I'm concerned about for uh, our viability here as a Storm deck in terms of what I'm expecting to come across. But, um, ooh, Underground Sea. Okay, Brainstorm. Mm -hmm. I don't know what this is. This could be Grixis Delver. This could be Doomsday. This could be, oh, Double Underground Sea. Preordain. Okay. I doubt that this is Doomsday. Doomsday doesn't usually play Preordain. Their, their like fun of cantrips are typically things like Sleight of Hand that don't actually draw cards. I'm not sure what to expect here. 
I went into my turn and I'm gonna cast a brainstorm. This could get dazed. Which could have been a reason to end step it, then they daze it, and then I untap and I brainstorm anyway. Because I have two of them. But uh oh, well, I guess that was the correct play. I wasn't thinking that they were gonna be a daze deck. This does not look like Doomsday. This kind of looks like some kind of blue black beseech deck, and I was not expecting days from them. Uh, I guess this also could be Demir scam with preordains. I'm not I'm not sold on that. It could be though. I don't know. Uh, show and tell. Yeah, this could be like the uh, the 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 blue black Omni tell deck. Um, Dark Ritual. Doomsday. Okay, I was wrong about the Preordain. I guess they're playing Preordains. Uh, you know, like the Orcish Bowmasters of the, the world and the Narsets and things like that um, have moved the ancillary cantrips of Doomsday into ones that don't actually draw cards, like Sleight of Hand. I haven't seen Preordain in a Doomsday pile in a little while, but um, I mean, it is a classic Doomsday card. So maybe I should have checked myself. And this looks like pretty classic Doomsday. Yeah. Um, they've got Veil of Summer, so they're playing the bug Doomsday list. Definitely something that we need to be concerned about moving forward. Um, okay. That was... Uh, is that a decent draw? Okay. How much mana can I make? This is one, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine mana. Um, so I can actually beseech into tendrils the normal way. I don't have a bargainable permanent, but I have lethal. And I'm going to do it. I'm just going to count. I think that they have a force of will in their hand. There's one force of will, two force of will. That stinks. Okay, I think that they are going to stop us. However, we're going to do this anyway. We have a really cool league. Uh, same deck that they played on Brian's members only video from today. Oh, okay. Well, there's the Force of Will first off, and they <laughs> exiled Force of Will. We knew about two forces, and there they are. Okay. I uh, am gonna just let them do their thing. I am probably dead if they untap. Just in case they miss sequence their pile, I'll let them play it out. Um, oh, brainstorm. Okay, yeah, I'm not. I'm not surviving. Yeah, if you want to check out the updated version of the deck that I'm playing, you can become a YouTube member, which I'll tell you about after this, and. Um, you got a lot of really cool perks, but one of the coolest right now is that you get to see a bunch of new uh, technology that we're testing with before the rest of the public does. And we get, uh, we get some extra special new stuff that you get to see before the rest of it. So if you want your, to sweep your locals with amazing things, then you can. And as far as sideboarding guy, uh, sideboarding goes, um, you could like you could sideboard the tendril or the the tendrils, the thoughtsies in, but um, I'm really not wanting to do that. I would rather have four copies of thoughtsies with my burning wishes um, whenever I need them rather than the one of that I'm drawing towards. Uh, this is not a main game plan in the, in the, in the main deck. So I'm just going to resubmit. Alan, yes, Doomsday. This is not, Doomsday is not something that I have played on. Uh, yeah, it's not a very good matchup. Uh, it's not a, a deck that I've played on stream before. I need some reps and I don't have them yet. Um, but if, when I do, I will eventually, you know, um, put Doomsday in the poll, which 
if you didn't know already. Every Thursday morning, or whatever time it is in the time zone that you're in, every Thursday, about 12 hours before the stream starts, it's actually 11, um, you can vote for what I play on stream. And as far as this, my internet should not be sucking today. I got it all fixed. It might just be you. I really hope that it's you. I'm running a test right now. Um, okay. I'm going to mulligan this. The Gaia's will in my hand is not as much of a problem as normal. Um, eh, maybe I, my internet is sucking a little bit. Okay. Um, I'm going to mulligan this. And I'm going to keep this hand. The Galvanic Relay really not, looks to pay this hand off nicely. Um, and I had them come out on Sunday, no, Saturday last week, and hopefully fix a lot of things. They installed a new splitter for the apartment complex as a whole. Um, but there are some ups and downs with all of that. It's still Oklahoma internet, I guess. It is what it is not even Oklahoma internet it's just the fact that there's only one offering in my apartment complex so there's no competition they can just do whatever they want Ooh. okay I'm good with this I'm gonna put the beseeches on the bottom draw the lotus petal and I'm gonna just pass the turn they are a Thoughtseize deck. They're also sometimes a Duress deck, but that's typically only three cards. They typically play one, two Thoughtseize and one Duress. Um, are we good now as far as buffering goes, Alex? Um, my internet speeds say that it dipped a little bit for maybe a couple of minutes and we're back down, we're back up. Oh, and we get Thoughtseize again, um, of course. That relay is pretty good. Okay, Jay, thank you very much. Uh, no audio skipping. We'll see what ends up actually happening. Hmm. Okay, so this is the requisite four mana that we need. It's actually five mana that we need to beseech into Gaia's Will. And let's see, one, two, three, four. Gaia's Will is five. And then six, seven, eight, nine. This is lethal. Uh, e, there's only one Oklahoma. That is true. Um, I'm going to try for this. I don't think that it's getting any better. We have lethal rolled up. And I'm just going to do what I can. We can beat a daze. We cannot beat a force of will. We have a beseech. Okay, a force of negation. That also works. Um, I'm going to concede just in the interest of time. I Am I going to do that? We have a beseech on top of the library, and we're a dark ritual away from casting it and winning again. I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to keep playing. Music makes it more, more noticeable. Yeah, I, I like the music. I think I'm going to always keep the music, um, but it does make some of the glitches more noticeable. Why is that not a Beseech? Oh, because I fetched. Yeah, that would make sense. Um, but a Veil is not bad. As far as as far as draws go, okay. They don't have three black mana unless they dark ritual. Oh wow! I should stop talking. Okay. They have two cards. I am one hundred percent cycling this veil at the end of turn if I get a turn. So 
So let's see how it goes. We've got force of negation, force of negation, force of negation, force of will, force of will, force of will, force of will, force of negation. All of the forces are accounted for, which is great. They've got a fluster storm here, a fluster storm here, and one veil of summer. Okay, so we are, we're likely having to play around a veil of summer, which is just fine. We have a a, a grape shot. Well, that was not the draw that we wanted. Hmm, that was not it either. Uh, I'm going to concede now. Um, you know, Burning Wish would have been potentially good later down the road, but we needed, um, I don't know, a couple of really good draws. Okay, so we didn't get there against Doomsday. A typically poor matchup for the Epic Storm. Um, eight forces is kind of rough. Plus two Fluster Storms, plus two Veil of Summers, and Thought Seizes and Duresses. Uh, and on top of that, they can be a turn one combo deck. So, like, you know, you do what you got to do. Um, but we're going to queue up for round three. And I'm going to tell you how you can support this content and content like it that Bryant makes every other day. Um, and uh, I'll tell you how you can become a YouTube member. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsroom.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. All right. It is not quite time to combo. We are still waiting. Oh. I spoke too soon. It is exactly time to combo. And we are playing up against Squidward. Okay. We won the die roll. And unfortunately, this is not a keepable hand. Okay. This is potentially better. I'm going to keep it on the strength of Brainstorm. And on the draw, I'm just going to Misty Rainforest pass. I'm going to bottom a Dark Ritual. Uh, Jay, that was a little bit tough, but that's okay. We, we definitely got O2'd, which was, you know, disrespectful. But we have the ability to beat a Doomsday matchup, but it just doesn't come around nearly as often as we would like uh yeah doomsday is is a very good anti-combo deck um it's it's quite good at beating other doomsday or other combo decks okay lion's eye diamonds and moxo pull with the brainstorm i'm going to brainstorm uh polluted delta from our opponent could be anything honestly um Polluted Delta and its counterpart Underground Sea have seen a resurgence as of late. Turns out we were always playing it. It was always cool. But other people have picked up on that. Okay. Well, that was not as cool. Let's put back Chrome Mox and a uh, Lotus Petal. Yeah, I'll keep around both Dark Rituals. Yeah. Let's, let's do that, and I'm actually just going to pass. Um, no need to be too hasty. Now I could play around Stifle here, but I think it's more common to play around Wasteland. And it's an Underground Sea. Is it a Cycling? Nope, it's a Brainstorm. Okay. They could have cycled something like a Lorien Revealed or a Troll of Kaza Doom which um, are both relatively popular cards, but they're brainstorming at the end of their turn instead, or end of our turn instead. Polluted Delta again. Is this just scam? Ponder. 
I mean, it could be Doomsday. It could be back-to-back -back Doomsdays. I don't know. Um, there's only one way to find out, and that's beat them and thoughtseize them before winning. That's the only way that I know, obviously. Okay, they chose not to shuffle the ponder. Um, and they're passing the turn. Okay. I am going to shuffle. And it's going to be an underground sea. Another brainstorm. Okay. Well, I'm going to cast the first one. Deuces in hand. And, oof, okay. Well, what I'm going to do is put back the chrome mox and the brainstorm play out the taiga, and I'm going to pass the turn. We, unless they're a doomsday deck, which they totally could be, I'm not arguing that. However, um, if they're a scam deck, I think that I want to hide the brainstorm, and I'll hold open the veil of summer. We're not under a lot of pressure, unless they're doomsday, and I think I'm okay with all of this. Third, Underground C. Are we Scam? Are we Doomsday? We're cantripping out the wazoo. This is a person in dire needs of a card that they don't have in their hand right now. Um, this is a Murktide Regent. Okay, well, they've got it in their hand now. We're playing against Scam, which I'm more okay with than Doomsday, that's for sure. Um, okay. We're going to draw one of the cards we already know about, which is a Chrome Mox. And wow, that was good. Let's put back Chrome Mox Dark Ritual. And let's cast the Dark Ritual. One of them. And another. Okay. And let's cast a Veil of Summer here. We don't need to do it right now. Um, I'm just going to do it to simplify things while I'm streaming. It's going to help me a little bit, even though it's a little bit less properly sequenced. I should probably cast the Veil of Summer after the Beseech has resolved and before the Gaia's Will resolves. Um, is that right? I think that that's right. I could be wrong. But here we go. Here's the Beseech. We're playing around several dazes. And okay, now I'm going to hold priority. Uh, actually, check my Discord DMs. Oh no. Um, okay, so I'm going to I'm really close to lethal, actually. What I'm gonna do is, instead of getting the Gaia's Will, I'm just going to continue beseeching and bargaining the Lion's Eye Diamonds and uh, this beseech is going to get the Tendrils of Agony. We're gonna leave it here so that I can play around two copies of days. Okay. Yeah, uh, I didn't want to go for the third Beseech, which would kind of play around days, but get it exact and then and then worry about it later. I don't know. It didn't sound like, it didn't feel like they had a force of will, um, but a couple of days as might have ruined my day. I don't know. All right. So let's sideboard. Um, let me message Bryant really quick. So uh, let's, it's gonna be the same sideboarding. It's gonna, well, minus the abrupt decays. We're gonna 
sideboard in the carpet of flowers and we're gonna sideboard out a pair of mox opal and a pair of chrome mox. So abrupt decays are not as necessary against a deck that typically plays one null rod, if any, in the current metagame. There was a time where they were playing two or three, but right now they're only playing one, if any, and uh, Abrupt Decay is often just a dead draw. Whereas Rug Delver or Is It Delver or some of the control decks where I need to be concerned about problematic permanence, I don't need to be here as much. If I lose to the one of Null Rod, okay, fine, but I'm also bringing cards in that are good against Null Rod. So this is the sideboarding plan for something like a Scam or a Death Shadow deck. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Oops. We lost the die roll. We didn't lose the die roll. We just lost, uh, we won the last game. That's what happened. Uh, this, oh, I wish I had some blue mana to turn this brainstorm into an actual castable card, but since I can't, uh, one, two, three, four, um, this is, you know, close, but I'm not going to keep it. I'm going to mulligan in this hand. Um, this is better. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to... Oh man, there's such a discard heavy deck. Do I want to get rid of a Galvanic Relay and then keep all of the zeros and just hope that I can Veil of Summer on turn two? Or on my turn one? Like, on their turn two, I should say. Um, yeah, I'm going to be a little risky here. Alrighty, they've got a ponder. Sorry, I was doing some things in the side. And they have cho chosen to shuffle their ponder. I like that. We have not gotten discarded. I can play out a Misty Rainforest and just hmm, innocently hold up this Veil of Summer. I'm going to get Thoughtsy's dazed. Watch it. I shouldn't speak these things into existence. Jordan, be smarter than that. I'm not, but we're working on it. Um, okay, brainstorm and a shuffle and then another ponder perhaps. Nope, okay. They're holding something up now that they weren't on turn one. I don't know what that is. It's not a Bowmasters. Um, you know what? I actually think that I want to brainstorm right now. I, I, I should brainstorm right now. Let's do that. Hmm. Well, that's going to be really good next turn. cat is about to say hi to everybody there's his tail there we go okay i gotta put two cards back i don't want to shuffle my hand so let's let's do this let's put galvanic relay beseech back if i need to shuffle then this is acceptable and then if i don't shuffle Nah, I'm probably sh shuffling anyway. Uh, yeah. Okay. If I wanted to not shuffle uh, the the brainstorm, then I put it. I should have put galvanic relay on top. Ooh, a wasteland, huh? Okay. Brainstorm.
Jonathan, hey, I'm so glad that you're here catching the stream live. Uh, welcome, welcome back. I think I recognize that you've been here before. Uh, that's pretty exciting and we, we love a return visitor. So let's see. Since I got wastelanded, um, I want to draw the additional Beseech because this one is more likely to get interacted with and I can't actually hold up Veil protection. Um, was that a misplay? Should I have just like... not done anything? They have six cards in hand. I shouldn't have done anything. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is an evaluation that's happening a little too late. I should have shuffled and not drawn the Beseech and just held up Veil of Summer. Um, that's my bad. I shouldn't have played out the Lion's Eye Diamond. Yeah, that was a little bit messy. Um, I needed to just be a little bit more patient. I was thinking that I could beseech now and then work on beseeching uh, eventually. Oh, this is fine. Um, Null Rod is a problem if I want to use the Lion's Eye Diamonds, but I'm using them as bargain fodder right now. Okay. So this Veil of Summer, I can't cast both in one turn. Uh, yeah, Gavin, oh my gosh, how dare I? Um, but I remember trying to like pronounce Castagna and mispronouncing it and really having a hard time with that. Um, so that one's seared into my brain. And we're gonna pay for this day since it's a bait anyway. Uh, Dark Ritual is great, okay. What is the advantage of TES now over something like the mono black splash green for Veil deck? Well, Carly, we get to play Galvanic Relay and Burning Wish and Brainstorm and Ponder. These are incredibly powerful cards that can turn our combo plan on a dime. Whereas something like the mono black with Veil is really dependent on its draws, right? We have to play so much more with a deck like that um, that is dependent on the draws and has a more focused plan. With something like the Epic Storm, our plan can change from turn over turn over turn into something that our opponent is not ready for at all, which I'm pretty excited about. Speaking of something that I'm excited about, I think that this is a go turn. Um, they have four cards in hand and I have Veil Protection uh, for a win? Question mark? Is it for a win? It's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have Veil and I'll have one mana left over. Yeah, this is a win attempt. Um, Alternatively, I can ponder for something, um, but they they hit days and wasteland. They could have a surgical extraction or a force of will. I'm not sure. Yeah, relay is incredible, Gavin. You have got that right on the nail. Since we're not an Adnaz deck anymore, which is a wild thing to say. Our life total is not as important. I think that I want um, lasagna, castagna. Okay, that makes sense. Really unfortunate that we have to work with food to try to pronounce names that are more difficult, but everybody knows how to pronounce lasagna. So that's something. And this hand is something. Uh, Sean, um, is there a reason I'm missing to Veil before the Surveil trigger resolves? 
I think that that's something that happened way earlier in the stream against my teamer Darcy deck, uh, the tempo deck. Um, I'm passing the turn, by the way. I think that that's just fine. Um, oh, that's a that's all right, Sean. I'm gonna answer your question anyway. Um, but yeah, I don't want them to surveil and expect with the expectation that their spell is going to not resolve. I want them to make those decisions uh, afterward or beforehand. No, afterwards, excuse me. I don't know. I don't know if that made sense at all. Um, I want to make decisions before my opponent makes decisions, I guess. Okay, Sauron's Ransom. Interesting. Okay, so this is in their main phase. The cards on top, which, by the way, Brian Koval, if you're watching this video for some reason, instead of actually doing something productive, there's a text box right here. The top pile will be presented face up. The bottom pile will be presented face down. I'm going to present cards in the top pile to my opponent, and I have to figure out what to show them. I think what it's going to be is... I want them to not know that they have a brainstorm available, right? So brainstorm is going to be hidden, and I've got to hide something else with it. And I think what I'm gonna do is give them Orcish Bowmasters and Drown in the Lock. No, no. Orcish Bowmasters and Merktide Regent, I think. Because those are the cards that I care the least about, but are, I think, good enough to keep the pile anyway. Maybe not. Maybe they go for the hidden pile. But they can only do one of those things. Ugh. If they land drop and drown, have drown up, that's kind of a problem. So I want drown hidden and I want brainstorm hidden. But I'm not sure if Merktide Region and Orcish Bowmasters are good enough to take on their own. I guess we'll find out. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, well, they've got the cards that I didn't want them to have, um, which is fine. Okay, they've pondered. That's okay. And they have a Merktide Regent, a dragon that's holding the ring, which um, if you know anything about the lesser rings that like the dwarves had, the goblins ate some of them. Okay, there's a Galvanic Relay on top of my deck that I don't care for. I'm going to get a Bayou, and we're going to see what we draw. Carpet of Flowers is very good. Oh, Carly. Yeah, he knows for sure, but um, I'm just kind of teasing. Okay, this allows us to double Beseech, which is incredible. Let's move into second main phase. And add four black. And Lion's Eye Diamond. Dark Ritual. We're gonna do everything right now. Dark Ritual. Um, I don't think that I'm getting another turn especially with the Drown in the Lock that we know is in our opponent's hand. We're going to cast this with Bargain and sack a Lion's Eye Diamond that doesn't do anything. So this Beseech is kind of counter fodder, interaction fodder of a sort, um, because we can put the other Beseech on the stack. And we have Veil of Protection, the Veil of Summer Protection. So we actually have quite a bit of protection here. OK. 
Gaia's Will is going to be cast. Okay, they're doing this properly and they're letting the Gaia's Will hit the stack first, which is fine because I can beseech into Tendrils of Agony now. Oh, they didn't have anything, okay. <laughs> Uh, that works out just fine for me. I will take that a little bit easier. I think that I could have done something a little bit better. I didn't necessarily need to get the Gaia's Will up front. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Um, this was a little bit more risky in terms of being open to surgical extraction. Um... But I couldn't really do anything about that. And even if I was open to surgical extractions, I had a ponder to potentially find something that would have won the game. A uh, brainstorm or a ponder, right? Oh, I had the land drop, so I could actually brainstorm, fetch, and then ponder. So that worked out really nicely. Uh, no, it does nothing. This Lion's Eye Diamond does nothing. It's actually not true. I made this Lion's Eye Diamond do something I bargained with my opponent for the win. So that's something. Um, eat your heart out, Null Rod. Alrighty. So let me tell you about some awesome... Uh, start with the Man in the Mirror. Absolutely, Hunter. So if you're planning on going to Eternal Weekend, what I expect you haven't done in a little while, perhaps, I don't know, I don't know your life, is play in paper with Storm. So I've been working on it a little bit more recently because I need to get into the habit of having those repetitions. And the best way to do that is with our token pack. Eternal Weekend is coming up in a few months and you gotta be ready. So let me tell you about the token pack while we wait for our round four opponent. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Alrighty, we are waiting for our fourth opponent. We have yet to go to a game three. These have all been decisive matches against uh, well, this didn't look like Scam, but we didn't we didn't see Grief, so I don't know. Scam, Rug Delver, Doomsday, and our fourth opponent, Solid Snake 408. We won the die roll, which is great. And oh boy. Okay, Chromox Imprint, Burning Wish, one. Lotus Petal, two. Mox Opal, three. Rite of Flame, four. Burning Wish, down to two. We can't do anything. This is not a keepable hand on the play. Um, if this Veil of Summer was a plus one mana of any kind, then we would have been able to Galvanic Relay, and if it was a plus two mana, we would have been able to empty the Warrens. Unfortunately, that is not going to be the case. So fortunately, we get to Mulligan. And this hand... Oh boy. Will we get a game three? I don't know. I've not won very many game threes in this league, so 0% on winning game threes. Oh man. I'm not sure about this hand. I'm gonna keep it. Um, this is this is one of the kind of iffier hands. I don't have a cantrip right in front, but I have the opportunity to draw one and I have a bargainable permanent for Beseech. Uh, the best card that I could draw right now is a Dark Ritual. And we'll see where things go. Another Polluted Delta deck. Okay, that's fine. Um, I could Burning Wish for something. I'm gonna wait. This Polluted Delta means that I want to hold up Veil of Summer for a potential scam turn um so we'll see 
what dice do I use? I have um, like game dice that are like an inch and a quarter large. Um, I don't use the dice for anything other than um, counters on Wishclaw Talisman. In a comp REL event, you're supposed to use paper or tokens, not dice, because when things can get knocked over, then, you know, a die, a die could roll and start misrepresenting if that wasn't trackable. Um, you know, misrepresent floating mana or something like that. So, um, Carly, I usually use uh, the tokens, which are great. You get, you know, a dozen storm tokens, or you actually get a few more than that, but you get some some awesome aids for your combo game. So, Burning Wish. I will Veil of Summer something. I'll play into days. That's fine. Ah, oh, I really should have thought about this a little bit more. I should have gotten a... Uh, okay, here I'm going to get a Galvanic Relay. Um... What I should have done was get a Bayou here with this Taiga. I have a Beseech in hand, and currently I don't have three black mana. If this was a Bayou and I didn't have to find a green source, oh, well, that stinks. Um, then I would have... I would have needed to draw a black source rather than any mana source to cast a Beseech, so it was a little bit of a misplay. But as it stands, it was perfect, and I knew exactly what I was doing this whole time because our opponent wastelanded our non-black source. Unfortunately, I am not going to be able to do anything right now. And they have an Orcish Bowmasters. That's okay. Um, brainstorm. What kind of brainstorms do do everybody play in paper? I play Ice Age brainstorms. The original Ice Age brainstorms. Uh, this is a reprint of the Mercadian Masks art from Dieter Litzi. Um, you could also play Mercadian Masks brainstorms or the M20 brainstorms that are like the, the cloud, things like that. Uh, okay, so I'll answer your question, Carly, in just a second. Ah, Underground Sea. Excellent. Third black source. Um, how would you track the eight plus black mana? Are there more than 12 of each basic land type for floating mana? Yes. Uh, it's actually not basic land type. It's actually just colors of token, of, of mana. You get several, I, I, I don't even remember how many black uh, mana tokens you get. You get blue and red and green and white and colorless. Um, you have an abundance of mana tokens and each one of them represents a single mana floating okay now comes the crux of this turn do i galvanic relay for three this underground sea i don't know i'm gonna do it leaf antoinette welcome to chat I am so glad that you're enjoying this. Uh, Cold Snap Precon, disgusting. Who who do you think you are? Uh, that's pretty good. Um, okay. Storm Count 3. We get a Dark Ritual, a, Gal a Beseech the Mirror, and a Lion's Eye Diamond. Those are all fantastic. Okay. Um, Strixhaven Japanese art ones. Those are good, talk, Gavin. That's a, that's a good option, too. Um, so, Leaf, what were you playing in Legacy, and when was the last time you kind of took a look at the format? I don't know. I started playing in... started playing Legacy in, like, 2017, 2018, something like that. 
Uh, Hunter Brown, definitely recommend brushing up on all tournament rules and basic cleanup stuff prior to attending. Tracking mana and storm one way at home and not being able to in paper can be disorienting. You are absolutely correct. It is very important that you understand the difference between comp competitive rules enforcement levels and casual rule enforcement levels. Those are two very different things and Eternal Weekend is going to be competitive rules enforcement. So you got to make sure to know the, dis the difference. There are, I'm sure, YouTube videos discussing the two and what you can do with them. Maybe that's something that we can do for the Epic Storm. So, uh, I'm going to have to look into that. I don't know. That could be a very useful tool. Um, we'll see. Okay. Um, I'm going to brainstorm first. Okay, so here's the thing. I know that what I'm going to do is going to reduce my life total severely. I'm going to brainstorm into two Orcish Bowmasters. However, I don't think that I'm going to win the game otherwise. I just need to make this work. Um, I need green mana for this Veil of Summer. Um, etched Foil Brainstorms. I bet that looks good, Caleb. I've seen your Etched Foil Brainstorms. Yeah, I know those look good. Okay, so I'm going to put back a Brainstorm because I can't cast that without dying. And then I'm going to put back a Galvanic Relay. And I found my green mana. Um, Modern Masters in the Epic Storm, 5th edition and Ant, since you use white-bordered variants in that deck. Okay, yeah, that's fair. Um, the white-bordered variants can be good. I know that I have a white-bordered Swamp if we ever end up playing the basic version uh the basic land version of the deck just because all of my or most of my uh duels are revised so i have a revised swamp to match um hopefully that will change i'm working my way towards uh foreign black border duels but that takes a little while cast with bargain uh, here, here. Okay. And what are we doing? With six cards in your hand. You have a Force of Will. Well, I have a Veil of Summer. I can beat a Daze. I can't beat another Force. Okay. You got another Force. That's fine. All right. Picked up MTG 2016, Legacy in 2018. Haven't played more than a handful of games since COVID, but I've been checking up on the deck updates in the last few months. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Desire got two months in the sun. Yeah, I know. It's <laughs> in and out. Uh, easy come, easy go, as they say. Um, it's been a little wild. Uh, the past long while has been wild for, for Storm decks. You know, uh, Two months it's just been ridiculous we have no idea what's going on we're optimizing lists left and right and then something new happens and we have to re-optimize and oh, i can't tell you how fun this has been it's been a little frustrating at times but um it's been it's been great so all good stuff uh, which dark ritual art? I have beta signed dark rituals. So I sign, I get my, my cards signed by the artists and I go for original printings as much as I can. Okay, I'm gonna keep this one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cast a taiga into a carpet of flowers. We're gonna play underneath a daze. They have to have a pitch counter and we're gonna be good to go. If they do have a pitch counter, then fine. It's whatever. And they don't. No, I'm not going to use Carpet of Flowers. Uh, working on building Misprinted the Epic Storm. That sounds like an incredible journey. I, If you are a member of our Discord, you should post <clears throat> in the card showcase um, updates on your journey whenever you do that. I think that that would be really exciting to see. A lot of people would like that. Um, I have a local friend of mine that um, has Misprinted Burn, and it's one of the most gorgeous decks. Every single card in there has a unique story and every single time, just a single card even uh, is brand new and it fills me with the utmost joy seeing him kind of geek out about his deck. 
All right, no to the carpet of flowers. We're good to go. Jack, uh, you're not much of a legacy gamer. Just enjoy watching it. Reasonable. My CEDH deck is needing only about 10 foils, and then it's on to foreign black world duels for that. Yeah, that's pretty good. I I like the FBBs. Uh, I would like a set of them for the Epic Storm. Who knows what we end up playing, but we usually only end up playing one of each. Although we're playing two Underground Seas in version 15.0. So that's going to be an interesting one to find out about. Hmm. Okay. I like how this is developing. We're hitting our land drops. They wastelanded us. And uh, they're trying to play around Carpet of Flowers as much as possible. Uh, we're still developing just fine. To be a fly on the wall for those calls. Yeah, I know. Um, okay. Grief. That is going to... I'm going to try veiling this first. Um, I'll get the bayou. Okay, that resolved. Excellent. So they can reanimate this, um, but it doesn't doesn't do anything. So that's nice. Um, started legacy diminishing returns and ill-gotten gains were the best for a combo engine. Yeah, yeah. It's gotten a little bit better than that, but the roots of all of that have still stayed strong. Okay, I'm going to brainstorm here. We have something that could work here. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is put a Beseech and a Burning Wish on top, play out my land, and I'm my goal is to not fetch. Um, they have five cards. I'm expecting them to have counter magic, so what I want to do is next turn Burning Wish for a Thoughtseize um, and then figure things out. Playing a storm, storm at a tournament video. Yeah. Um, I think that that might be something that I pitched to Bryant. Maybe we can collab on it, or maybe we can bring Alex in on that. It'd be kind of cool. Um, brainstorm. You have error burning wishes. That's pretty cool, Leaf. That's really, really cool. I would definitely like to see that. Um, yeah, Gavin, I, I have English, just English language. Uh, oh, oh, for the FBBs? Yeah, I think it's um, French. I have a French Badlands, and I'd like to stay consistent. And it's only because the French Badlands was the first one that I got. Um, it was it was a mismatch in a in a playset, and a friend of an, a friend of mine and I went. Uh, two ways on it and I got the French one and he got the Italian ones um, and it ended up working out quite nicely okay they fetched two islands that make this so much easier for me um Yeah, I mean errors are errors, right? You gotta you gotta get what you can get. <clears throat> I know that my my friend that has burn has several. Um, okay, we got drown in the lock, spicy. I've got another beseech on top. If I can figure this out to where I'm not cracking the misty rainforest, which I think is fine, I can draw into that. Um, and we're going to be good to go. So this can be a combo turn, and the next turn can also be a combo turn. Okay. So next turn can be a combo turn, potentially. We'll see. Um... See what our opponent does. They have three cards in hand now, and this is a Merktide Regent. So they have two cards in hand. They pitched a Sauron's Ransom. That's fine. 
two cards in hand. Can we get there? Bob the Builder. Yes, we can. Okay, yes here. We're gonna make black. And what I'm gonna do is um, Misty Rainforest, I suppose, for a uh, Volcanic Island. And then tap all of this and sack the carpet of flowers. And I'm gonna hold control, and I'm gonna cast the Gaia's Will, and I'm going to crack the Lotus Petal, and the Lion's Eye Diamond. <laughs> Our opponent says pretty dece, I would agree, and that resolved. Okay, so I think that we've just got this rolled up. And we do, okay. Um, should have gone Italian. They're cheaper and have way more legends printings for cards than French. Ooh, Carly. Okay. I mean, I'm only one card deep. I can maybe try to figure out a swap for Italian. I didn't know that. Okay. Hmm. The one land hand. Double ponder on the draw. Hand not that great outside of the ponders. I'm going to mulligan this one. And this is much better. Uh, ooh, wait. No blue mana. Hmm. I think that that's fine. They, they uh, mulligan to six. Uh, Joe, uh, you don't love your revised white borders, but at least they're English. Yeah, I know. They're kind of expensive. It's going to be a slow burn for me to get these. I'm going to... Man, if I had a blue source. I mean, if I keep this, I'm pitching the Brainstorm, and I'm going to hope to, like, Burning Wish for a Galvanic Relay. Um... Or I could Burning Wish for an Echo of Eons at some point. I don't know. I'm going to mulligan this one. Ew, this is even worse. This is way worse. Okay, well, I got to mulligan this one. And this is a keepable hand. Uh, wow, that kind of hurt. Um, okay, let's put back the Chrome Mox and the Chrome Mox and the Beseech the Mirror. Our plan is to relay... And if our opponent has disruption, then so be it. Lorien revealed, they get themselves an underground sea. Definitely makes sense. And then they play the underground sea, presumably. There it goes. Holding up two mana? What? Who would have thought? Um, okay, that was pretty good. Let's try the Carpet of Flowers. If this resolves, we can likely relay. If this does not resolve, then they used a Carpet of... or a Counter Magic on Carpet of Flowers. Like a Dark Ritual, essentially. Eh, it's not a Dark Ritual. This is more like a Rite of Flame. Um, no, it's even worse. It just replaces itself right now. Um, let's use this ability. I would go with, um, let's go with blue. Just because maybe they don't counter this Lotus Petal if they think that we're not going for a relay. Which they didn't. Now I'm going to get a Volcanic Island, get my Bayou, Volcanic Island, all of my colors. I'm going to float Grixis because I can. Um, you know, Alex, your cards do the exact same thing as Bryant's cards. They kill the opponent dead. So it all works out in the end. Yeah, look at that Orcish Bowmasters.
Okay, we have Beseech Vale of Summer. Oh, double wasteland. That's disgusting. Okay. Well, I'm glad that we have this carpet of flowers, but this might take a bit. Okay, Gaia's Will. I am actually going to suspend that. Um, and I'm going to cast the Chrome Mox. I am not going to imprint anything. Um, and the Veil of Summer is just going to go away. Okay. Hmm. Cycle a troll. They get another underground. Oh, they get a swamp. Okay, sure. Play around the carpet of flowers like a good opponent. It makes sense. It's a good idea. Just don't want it. Okay. We've got three more turns. This clock is not going to get there uh, in that amount of time. So that's nice. I can re carpet of flowers. Which is potentially really good. Um, no, don't use it. Okay. Another wasteland. But they're not using it? Question mark? I wonder if they're going to next level. No, okay. They could have next leveled and wastelanded their underground sea. Uh, that technically m removes two mana from me as opposed to their wasteland, which removed one mana from me. Uh, but, you know. English and Italian. Okay, good to know. I'm going to cast this Burning Wish and see what happens. This is a castable spell, and currently I don't have very many of those. Is this a Spell Pierce or a Fluster Storm? A Daze. Okay. You know what? They just got to pick up their island and they might not replay it. Which would leave me stranded without any mana whatsoever. The three wastelands and my fairly mediocre mulligan to four does seem to be sealing my doom. One more turn before the will comes off, suspend. And we drew a Beseech the Mirror. Now I wish I had imprinted this Beseech to the Chrome Mox. But, you know, I wouldn't have known that. Uh, okay. So if they don't play an island, I would need to draw a plus one mana source to relay again. Um, yep. Yeah. Okay. Seems like a good idea. They are doing this very appropriately. And they might even just counter this guy as well. Yep. Well, we weren't drawing that anyway. The last Ride of Flame? Oh, yeah. You know, Gavin, sourcing the older cards can really be rough. It, like, the price can be reasonable. You just have to find it. And once you find it, then it's great. But um, finding it is really problematic. Of course, Japanese foils, that comes with their own kind of problems. Um, my Rite of Flames, English, original printing, non-foil or anything like that. Uh, okay, Taiga, not bad. Not great. We need a miracle and it's not likely to happen. Um, my Rite of Flames went uh, halfway around the world to get signed. Um, one of the uh, Four Seasons events the uh, the artist of Ride of Flame was in and one of the Epic Storm site writers at the time um, was going to it. Um, 
I just sent it to him and he got them signed for me and sent them back. It was incredible. So, okie dokie. This is not gonna work. Yeah, Wastelands cutting me off of mana completely. Um, oh well. Grief? Well, that's just rubbing salt in the wound. To be fair, if I draw... Oh, well, I actually can't draw anything, can I? So I drew a black source and a dark ritual, then everything would work out just fine. But that's not going to happen now. That was the last turn that I needed to draw something like that. Like a Chromox and then a dark ritual. But that's just not going to happen. Oh, they're giving me mana. Okay. And there's a dark ritual. I hope that this mm, prevents them from winning the game. Oh, I can't even tutor chain. All of the tutors are in my hand. Yeah, they have a force of will. Okay. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, we kind of knew that that was in garbage time, right? I was losing that one. But we forced a game three, and I'm still 0% for game threes. So let's go for the positive record. And uh, while we wait for that, let me tell you about our awesome Patreon. It's going to support the written content for the website specifically. There's an awesome team over there. I'm a part of that awesome team, I suppose. And... Um, we have awesome content and an exclusive sideboard guide that you can't get anywhere else. Let me tell you a little bit about that. Want early access to articles at theepicstorm.com? Become a member of our patron to get articles seven days early on top of other sweet benefits and help us pay our website team. You can sign up at patreon.com slash theepicstorm. Alrighty. You know, Jack, picking up that card that you've just been searching and searching and searching for feels incredible. I, I know the feeling. Um, I got to pick up a, like, I was searching for signed Verdant Catacombs, just English Zendikar Verdant Catacombs, and they took forever. But I have my playset finally, and they're pretty close to matched signatures, which I'm really excited about. There's some variation in uh, Vance Vance's signatures. Ooh, here we go. Round five, Hunting Jordanson. Um, that sounds really familiar. Yorion Sky Nomad, they're a Death and Taxes player. Okay, that's probably why it sounds familiar. And with this Ponder, we're really close to finding something that's gonna win. If it's a Burning Wish, then I could potentially empty red, red, yeah, okay. I think that I'm going to keep this and hope to turn one my opponent on the back of this ponder um, or a draw step. Polluted Delta mm, kind of speaks to not, <laughs> not death and taxes. It's a swamp and uh, you know, the, the death and taxes lists have been playing black now for Orc Orcish Bowmasters, but this does not look like death and taxes because they are planes fetches uh, as opposed to swamp fetches. I'm going to get a volcanic island to get all of my colors under me. With this bayou, I should say. And there's a burning wish. Okie dokie. I'm going to keep this. Um, obviously, there's no protection right away, but we're going to see what happens with that. So I'm just going to leave the Burning Wish on top to protect it from discard. And see where we go. Underground Sea. Another Underground Sea matchup. That is quite a lot. Um, going to be honest. I was not expecting that. I guess I should have been expecting that. Okay, I'm gonna play around days and cast this Burning Wish. It's gonna hopefully look as innocuous as possible and I get that I can just, ooh, it resolved. 
Okay. I'm gonna get a Galvanic Relay. Now, the question here is, do I attempt to go off with this Chromox and Pride of Flame? I have the available mana, but I'm gonna do it. I, w I feel like they could have wanted to counter that. This is where they daze me. Nope, okay. I'm not gonna take a step further. I am not gonna give them a chance to counter anything else. I'm just gonna take my relay for five. I do think that I got a little lucky there. Chrome Mox, Veil of Summer, Veil of Summer, Galvanic Relay, and a Burning Wish. Okay, pretty excited about that. Like I said, I think I got a little lucky, but that's just fine. Foil Mindbreak Trap. Get out of here, Jack. What are you doing? What are you bringing that trash in here for? Right? I kid. Um, foil Mindbreak Traps are tough, right? But, yeah. I bet it's really good. Ooh, Esper. Samwise. Okay. So they buy back their Polluted Delta that they just fetched with. Okay. They are... Samwise... Sam Samwise Gamgee is wearing the ring, or bearing the ring, I should say, which only happens if he's carrying Frodo. At least in the, at least in the movies. Which, by the way, I don't know if y'all know this or not, but Andy Serkis, the actor who did the motion capture and voice acting for Gollum, who is incredible as an actor in general but also an incredible voice actor read through uh, and created audiobooks on audible for the lord of the rings trilogy and the hobbit i cannot recommend them enough i'm halfway through two towers right now and it's incredible just to hear him voice tom bombadil which you don't get in the in the movies just chef's kiss it's just perfect Okay, I'm gonna get some mana here first. Okay. Our opponent is F6. Which is good for me. Um, what do I want to do? I have five, six, seven mana which is not the requisite eight mana that I would need to Burning Wish and double relay. Um, so what I can do is cast a Veil of Summer and then, I think I can even cast another Veil of Summer. Yeah, I can cast everything here into the Burning Wish. I don't think that I want to get, for, for what it's worth, I think that my Esper opponent is very likely to have something like a main deck Plague Engineer that's gonna get me if I tempt them. So I'm not going to do that. And I'm going to get one, two, three, four. I'm three mana away from a peer into the abyss and they could have an Orcish Bowmasters and I'm two veils down. Or I could get a grape shot to get some, rid of a problematic Thalia or something like that. Um, from depths beyond, this is this is a lot of scam. Okay, eight misty rainforest, Gaia's will, beseech the mirror, veil of summer, ponder, underground sea, lion's eye diamond, right of flame. Okay, well we have lethal next turn. Um. Isn't this the fourth? I believe it is. Um, we had we had Rug, Delver, um, and then Scam. What else did we play against? And then, or this is not Scam, but um, this is the 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 fourth Underground C deck of the league, I should say.
This is a reader. This resolves, but like, I don't know. ETB's target opponent looks at the top three cards and separates them into a face down pile and a face up pile. Okay. They get a solitude. They get to see a solitude or they get to draw two lands. And they took the two lands, which is fine by me. I don't care about those at all. Hey, Joe, how's it going? Who? Who are we talking about? I don't know. Depends on where you are in the stream. We had someone recently talking about uh, stuff that was happening 40 minutes ago, so I don't, I don't know where you're at. Oh, uh, Andy Circus. Andy Circus, the the person who acted and did the the motion capture and voice uh, voice acting for Gollum, which is just super incredible. Mm. Okay, let's see where we are going with this. This is probably just lethal, especially since that veil just resolved. But um, black, black, black. Oh, we have the the lion's eye diamond. I'm not worried about black mana. Okay, chrome mox, no imprint. And then Grape Shot for 7, which brings them down to 11, and then I can Beseech for the Tendrils. Uh, because the Guy's Will is um, in Exile. Cast with Bargain, Chrome Mox, and Tendrils of Agony. Cool. Yes, excellent. Okay, uh, you love the ones, um, the old ones, Gimli wasn't a fool head, but really king-like. Yeah, Gimli was pretty cool. Gimli, Gimli's really good in the books. Um, he isn't quite as foolhardy, I suppose. Um, Dominique, hello. How's it going? Uh, movie theater, so a bit late to the stream. What did you watch? Did you watch The Nun 2? Did you watch Gran Turismo? Did you watch um, A Haunting in Venice? What, what, what was the movie tonight? Um, I'm curious. Okay. Uh, sideboard guide. We're looking for Esper, Hate Bears. We're going to go with... Let's see. Abrupt Decay, Echoing Truth, and three Carpet of Flowers. Cool. And we're doing three Chrome Mox and three Mox Opal. Very similar to how we've been boarding this entire league, as a matter of fact. Doomsday. Thank you. Doomsday was it, Travis. I appreciate that. Yeah. I'll go back in and I'll make all of the appropriate um, adjustments for things, but I couldn't remember it for the life of me. Um, okay, I'm going to keep this one. Um, no, the fourth one, Alex. Our first, our round one opponent was Rug, Teamer. Um, okay, I kept this hand, and we're going to see what our opponent does. Ponder. Well, okay. I was going to play out the Misty Rainforest, but now that I have the Ponder, I'm more incentivized to actually start ooh, doing more things like that. Okay, this Galvanic Relay looks pretty good right now. No Shuffle. And um, let's see what happens.
Oh yeah, Joe. That the I I'm really excited about the new artwork. I haven't actually we haven't gotten like some kind of ad for it yet that I can show y'all, but if you want to check out some really really cool artwork in the community page or on the Discord or on our Twitter, there's some awesome third-party um, merchandise that we got commissioned that just is straight up really really cool artwork uh, for Dark Ritual, for Storm, for Rogsai in CEDH, uh, just a bunch of really cool stuff. I really really recommend checking it out. Cannot stress enough how excited I am about that. Okay, wow, look at this Orcish Bowmasters that we're not going to play into yet. We're just going to... Um, I am going to play the Dark Ritual. Yeah, okay, cool. It's a little unassuming if you play it first. Um, and then we have all of the, the zeros. Um, hmm, do I brainstorm? Like a 4-4 four, four, and them attacking for 5 is really not that big of a deal. And we have the opportunity to just win on the spot. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Oh my gosh, it's a Bowmasters. They got me. This also increases storm count for the relay. So I'm not upset about this. Okay, if I keep the Beseech the Mirror, I don't have triple black, um, unless I do everything this turn. I'm not going to play into Force of Will like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Beseech the Mirror back and the land, <clears throat> and I'm going to fetch a Volcanic Island so that I have double blue if I need it. So, Saw 10, how was that? I I haven't seen that one yet. To be honest, I honestly haven't seen most of the Saw franchise. Uh, it kind of, um, yeah, chat might be a little bit behind me. I'm sorry about that. Um, but it might also be other people. I still haven't quite figured that out. But I've, I've not really kept up with the Saw franchise at all, which, you know, I don't really feel like I'm missing out on much other than the excitement of a new horror franchise that I can, can watch. But I don't know. I don't go for the gore horror as much as I do um, some of the, the thriller horror. Like Knock at the Cabin was pretty good. X was pretty good a couple of years ago, and, and then Pearl after that. Um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre remix, essentially, or something in the same vein. All right. This is pretty good. Double Veil of Summer is excellent. I'm pretty sure we can win just by doing everything right now. Um... I did forget about round one, or we all did, I suppose. Um, veil resolved. We can peer into the abyss. Um, I was not expecting that to resolve without a fight, but now that it has, I am pretty excited to just straight up here into Dispis. Um, I'm going to sack for a bunch of black mana and go get up here. So we have two black mana available and all we really need to do is increase our storm count. Um, there's going to be a lot of Orcish Bowmaster triggers. <laughs> that um, our opponent is going to have to click through. And I apologize. My internet has all of a sudden dropped like 
an anchor in the water. It's just completely tanked. Um, so I apologize for that one. This is the last round though. We've survived so far um, and we got so close. And in the end, it didn't even matter. Okay, our opponent is putting all of these triggers on the stack one by one. And we won.